of wireless electricity came into being. What happened to, to uh, generate the thought from our founder, an MIT professor, Marin Sajacic, to come up with the concept of wireless electricity? And it all happened in, two, in the early 2000s in the middle of the night. What happened? He was woken up in the middle of the night by his wife's cell phone that was chirping. Remember back in 2000, they would chirp if they were getting low on batteries? So he was woken up in the middle of the night and he said, I'm an MIT physics professor. There must be a way to get energy, electricity, which is in, you know, it's all over, it's in the wall, it's all around us. How do I get at that last meter so that all of our devices can always be charged and always be ready to go and don't have to chirp anymore and I can sleep through the night? So he started working on that in his lab in, at MIT and in 2005 wrote the paper with a theory of how to transport electricity wirelessly over distance. That was in 2005. He went back to his lab and in 2007, with a number of, of the students in his lab, proved the theory. He did it with two, uh, two meter uh, coils of electricity and he got the electricity to go from one coil to the other and light a light bulb one meter away. What's the foundation for this technology? I want you to think of two things, magnets and opera. When you think about an opera singer, if there was an opera singer sitting up here in the front of the room, and she sang one note into the room, and there were 200 glasses of water, with different amounts of water in each one of those glasses, she sings one note, one of those glasses will break. Not all of them, just one. And that's because the frequency that she's using is perfectly resonant with the amount of water that's in that one glass. We can do the same thing with magnets. If we energize a magnet at a particular frequency, what it will do is create an oscillating magnetic field of energy. And if I put a receiving device near it, that energy can be tra uh, transported wirelessly. Let me show you. So this is a magnetic coil. I have a battery, and so I can give it some power. So now there's power from the battery going into this magnetic coil. And it's creating this oscillating magnetic field of power all around it that's at a specific frequency. So that if I have a receiving device that's tuned to the same frequency, it lights up over distance. So the power is coming from this device, and if it gets the frequency, when I get it close enough, it is transporting wirelessly over distance. Now we all have wireless electricity in our lives right now. If you have an electric toothbrush, you put it in a stand and it's recharged every night wirelessly. But it requires it to be very tightly coupled on top of it, pressed against each other. One of the first big revolution series that we can do it over distance. I also have directional um, flexibility. Also, it's going to be a little harder to do with. So I can do one device, I can do two devices. So think, this is my laptop, and this is my phone, and this is my desk. I can power my laptop and my phone through the same uh, resonant source device. Another thing to keep in mind, this can go through any material other than metal. So if I put it underneath the desk, it still goes through wood. It goes through glass. It goes through your kitchen countertop. So I, in the very near future, this table will be your sourcing, your charging source. I put my phone down, I put my laptop down, and they all just charge wirelessly. The range is about one and a half times 
the uh, size of the coil. So you can see it's quite large, and then I lose power. At the same time, if I can just use a passive repeater, see how it went off? It increases the distance even more. So the, the, this oscillating field is jumping from the coil to this repeater up to the device. So that's why I can get additional distance by power, and power this thing, power this uh, wirelessly. Another thing to keep in mind is that one of the materials it goes through is human flesh. And it's perfectly safe. <laughs> so, while well, it's a nice feature, kind of fun to watch, we can think about medical devices that need power. Right now, we have the technology to put a heart pump in a person that can pump their heart for them uh, electronically. And that's a wonderful life-saving device for someone who's got serious heart problems. But that same doctor has to explain to this person that the rest of their life, they're going to have a cord coming out of their body. So they can never take a shower again. They can never go swimming. If I can implant a device, a heart pump, into the device, into the body, and have it powered wirelessly, that same person can re re recharge their battery simply by slipping over a coil at night. Put it underneath the mattress. The other wonderful thing about this technology is it's just pure physics and science. It can go from milliwatts of power up to uh, kilowatts of power. So this same technology can not only power your Bluetooth and your laptop, it can power your electric vehicle. You drive your electric vehicle into your garage and it powers your electric vehicle while, you're, you know, while it's parked there um, from a pad that's on the floor. This is a revolutionary technology, again, founded at MIT by a professor called Marvin Solyacic. Electricity was founded in 2007, and we're here to bring this, um, this concept and these, uh, this technology to market through commercial applications such as consumer electronics, automotive, industrial, medical, and military. So let me turn to the slides and we'll go through a little bit on the company background. So again, we were founded in 2007, and we have uh, a roll around this uh, idea of wireless transfer of power through highly resonant um, magnetic resonance. We have developed 111 patents around this technology, which is why I'd love to hear the professor saying that protection of patents is so, going to be so important in China. And we have 235 patents pending. And these are the fundamental patents around this concept of wireless power transfer. To date, we have built a great portfolio of intellectual property around that. We're also in the process of taking all this technology and hardening it and putting it on a chip. And that chip will be available in the middle of next year. So not only, because this is hard stuff, it's hard science, but it's a lot easier if we can sell you a chip that you can drop into your smartphone, you can drop into your laptop, you can, uh, and, and then enable the, the wireless charging to happen that way. We have 86 employees in Watertown, Massachusetts. Over 70% of them are engineers, and we have 50 with advanced degrees, including 18 with PhDs. So it's really all about cutting the last cord. If you think about in the computing world, we started with mainframes about, what, 40 years ago? And then we went to desktops. Okay, we're getting a little bit more mobile. Then we had laptops, but the laptop still had two important cords. One was the ethernet cord, and maybe they did that to get out to the internet, and the power cord. 12 years ago, with the concept of Centrino, we went to Wi-Fi and cut the second to last cord. What's the one remaining cord left? It's the power cord. And it's cutting that cord through wireless uh, power transfer that we're able to get to total mobility. So again, as I mentioned, there's applications, you know, what's wonderful about this technology and the fact that it's based in science is there is applications from small to big. So we're focusing on consumer applications around laptops and smartphones. 
Uh, all the way to automotive, uh, we have a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger that can charge um, a Toyota Prius or a uh, BMW i3. I mentioned the medical applications around not only heart pumps, but also neurostimulators. <coughs> Stimulators that can be put next to glands in your body, which naturally create the hormones you need to, to, uh, to, be, to live a healthy lifestyle that may be somewhat compromised. So if I can put a neurostimulator next to that gland and say, oh, you're a little short on dopamine right now, uh, generate a little bit more, the body can take care of itself through this concept of neurostimulation. We also have applications in industrial around drones, where we can take drones not only to go recharge things that are out in the field, but to also use wireless uh, technology to recharge the drone itself. And also military applications. Uh, the, today's soldier goes out to the field with a lot of, um, a lot of equipment on. We were able to, able to take uh, two uh, kilograms, uh, two, um, uh, what, about four pounds of, of, of weight out of the helmet by taking all those batteries out and putting them in the backpack that could wirelessly charge the helmet for the night goggles and the other computing um, uh, uh, things that are in the, in, the, in the helmet. So we've got a number of different applications. We've also had great success in reaching out not only to potential customers, but also to investors um, to bring this concept of wireless uh, technology transfer, uh, wireless power transfer uh, out commercially. Uh, we have uh, not only, um, again, uh, partnered with Hyen, who has been wonderful for us to open up doors in China, but our partners include Intel, the, the Chinese uh, appliance manufacturer, is an investor in a partner. Foxconn, you heard Charles Hume uh, earlier today, is an investor in electricity. And we've done a great job not only um, promoting wireless power transfer, but also building the ecosystem that we'll need to bring this technology out to market. So I want to show you a little video of this in action. So here we see someone who walks, walks into their office and they put their phone down and automatically charges. No wires, no connections at all. So your desk becomes your, your uh, charging station. Your kitchen counter becomes your charging station. That could be a phone, it could be a rice cooker, it could be a blender, anything you need charged, no more wires. And indeed, because you're putting your, your phone down, or your tongue, you're just snacking on energy all day, your bedside table becomes your charging source. And here's the car. This is an electric vehicle. You back it up into your parking spot, and what happens is that the, uh, from the pad on the ground, it's charging your car. Finally, with drones. The drone can be the source of, of energy for a remote device. So you fly the drone over, it charges the device. In this case, it was a phone. Or the drone can be out in the field, needs to be recharged, comes to a pad, logs on it, and gets charged. And it flies off again. So as we think about this technology and the future of the company, uh, earlier this year it was, a, it was abundantly clear to us that we need to pivot to China. And that's why it's so wonderful to have people in the room uh, today who are potential investors and potential collaborators. When you think about electric vehicles, it is clear the market for electric vehicles is going to be China. So as we bring this technology to market, we're very much looking forward to working with the IITC and other people in China to help develop the standards around this because you don't want lots of different standards out there. You want one pad out there that any car, any make, any model can drive over and get charged. And we are very fortunate to be working with a number of Chinese automotive manufacturers and also other standards makers in developing those standards. When we think about consumer electronics, where are all the consumer electronics in the world made? They're made in your country, not mine. So again, bring, working with uh, partners in China to bring this technology, to make it uh, easy to use and deployable is where the company's focus its efforts uh, today.
So with that, um, again, we are still in the process of bringing this technology to market. You will see the chips coming out in the middle of next year. This will be on the next generation Intel notebook that will be out late next year. It will be on uh, model years 2017 and 2018 automobiles. Uh, but we are still looking. Uh, we are still working on making this easy to use, so it can be as ubiquitous as we think it's got the potential to be. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then he's the CFO of Tri, a wide tri-state cooperation.